Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Skoken and we're here in chapter six to talk about polygons and quadrilaterals. What that means is we have moved beyond the triangle with three sides and three angles and we're going to start looking at larger polygons with more sides and more angles. For section one we're going to be looking at properties and attributes of polygons and we're going to start with a warm-up. I'm going to ask you to pause the video right now answer these questions, do the work for three through five, and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your work. Okay, hopefully you were able to answer that a triangle is a three-sided polygon, a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. When you plug in six for n, an expression under number three, you get the answer 24. When you plug in six in number four, you get 270. And for number five, when you need to solve for a, you get a is equal to four. Our objectives for this lesson are classify polygons based on their sides and angles and find and use the measures of interior and exterior angles of polygons. So we have quite a lot of vocabulary. I'm just going to read through it quickly and of course we'll discuss it during the lesson. Side of a polygon, vertex of a polygon, diagonal, regular polygon, concave, and convex. Previously, we learned about what a polygon is, and what we're going to be doing now is taking a closer look at the definition of polygon and the characteristics. That the polygon is made up of the red sides that are segments between points A and B, points B and C, points C and D, points D and E, and points E and A. We're going to call those sides of the polygon, and they really make up the outside of the polygon. Those are all segments. We also notice that where two segments come together, point C, for example, we're going to call a vertex. So we have five vertices on this polygon every time the two segments come together. Now there is another type of segment that we can draw that's called a diagonal, and that is represented by the green one, and that is when we join together two non-consecutive vertices, such as B and D. That's the one that's drawn, but there are a lot of other diagonals we could draw on the inside of this polygon. We could draw a segment from B to E. We could draw a segment from A to D. We could draw a segment from E to C. We could draw a segment from A to C. So you can see we have a lot of different diagonals that we could create within this five-sided polygon or pentagon. We know, and you have heard this many times before, that we name a polygon based on the number of sides it has. Here's a chart that we're going to be referring back to. This is also included in your notes. Just a quick definition, a polygon is a closed, meaning no openings. It's a closed plane figure. Plane figure means it's flat. It's not three-dimensional, it's two-dimensional. It's flat on the page formed by three or more segments that intersect only at their endpoints. Imagine that you want to be able to draw a polygon by putting your pencil down, drawing the different segments, and then lifting your pencil up without crossing over any of the sides or vertices. Okay, what we want to do in example number one is tell whether this figure is a polygon. It's got to meet all the elements of the definition. And if it is a polygon, we're going to name it by the number of sides. So we see this one is closed and it is plain and it doesn't cross over itself. So we're going to say, yes, it is a polygon. And then we notice that it's got six sides, making it a hexagon. This one is plain, meaning it's flat on the page and it is closed and it is made up of all segments. So again, it's a polygon. Based on the number of sides, which is seven, it's a heptagon. This figure, which looks like a moon, is not made of segments. Even though it is a plane figure, it's on the page flat, not three-dimensional, it's not made up of segments, and so we're going to say it is not a polygon. Another new vocabulary word that we have in this section is regular polygon. And this term refers to any polygon. First of all, it has to be a polygon. But then in addition to that, it's got all sides congruent and all angles congruent. We call it a regular polygon if it meets those two conditions. If it fails on either one or both of the conditions, then we call it irregular. 
We also have new terminology with regard to the shape of a polygon. And convex and concave are the terms that we use to, de to describe when we have a polygon that seems to have a little area that kind of looks like a cave. And so you see the polygon on the left, the quadrilateral on the left, has this area that's indented. So it kind of looks like a cave. And in addition to that, formally we would say that the diagonal between the two non-consecutive vertices is outside the polygon instead of inside the polygon. You notice with the one on the right that is labeled convex quadrilateral, the diagonals that are drawn are exclusively inside the quadrilateral the quadrilateral or the polygon. That's going to be the case for the diagonals. If they're inside, exclusively inside, we're going to know it's convex. If we have a diagonal that goes to the outside, we know it's concave. Let's look at an example of this. In example number two, we want to take a look at what this is. Remember that regular means all angles are congruent and all sides are congruent. For this polygon, we see that all sides are congruent, but we have two pairs of congruent angles, but not all four congruent to each other. So we're going to call this one irregular. The other thing, if we were to draw the diagonals for this polygon, they would all be interior to the polygon. So we know that that means it's convex, not concave. In this example, we have, if we were to draw diagonals between two non-consecutive points, we know that we would have them outside or external to the polygon, which means that this one is going to be concave, and it kind of looks like there are four little caves with those cutout sections, and that makes it irregular. Okay, for this one, we see four congruent sides, we see four congruent angles, and we know that it is convex because any diagonals that we draw will be internal to the polygon. So this one is going to be regular and convex. Let's move on to looking at the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. What we're going to do to try to make it a little bit simple and less memorizing is we're going to come up with a scheme that we can determine what the sum of all the interior angles of any size polygon will be. And so we're going to come up with a little bit of a formula. And we are going to start with looking at these polygons. We, what we're going to do is draw diagonals. Again, a diagonal is a segment between any two non-consecutive points or vertices. And so in the triangle, there's no way to draw any diagonals internal because that makes the triangle. In the quadrilateral, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick one angle, and then from that angle, we're going to draw all of the diagonals that we can. So for the quadrilateral, we can only draw one, and notice that that creates two triangles. In the pentagon, we're going to draw from the angle that we select, we're going to draw all of the possible diagonals, which is two diagonals, breaking up the pentagon into three triangles. And in the hexagon, we're going to pick an angle, draw all the diagonals that we can from there, that creates three diagonals with four triangles created. So you remember that a triangle interior angle all add up to 180 degrees, and that's what we're going to use to help us out. So for a triangle where we have three sides, one triangle interior to that because we couldn't draw any diagonals, we're going to do 1 times 180, which gives us 180 degrees, which is the sum of the interior angle measurements. For a quadrilateral, we have four sides. We were able to draw two diagonals, which is two less than the number of sides. We multiply that by 180, and we find that the sum of the interior angle measurements of a quadrilateral or a four-sided polygon is going to be 360. And that makes sense, because think about a square or a rectangle that have four 90-degree angles, and they add up to 360. For a pentagon with five sides, we were able to draw enough segments, uh, interior or diagonals, to create three triangles. Remember, we were able to draw two diagonals, creating three triangles. We take that number three, the number of triangles that we created, multiply by 180, and we get 540 for the sum of all the interior angle measurements. Now, notice that there's a pattern. The number of triangles that we can draw is two less than the number of sides, 
in the polygon. And then we take the number of triangles that we can draw and use that number to multiply by 180. So we're going to come up with a formula, n, which is the number of sides, minus 2 times 180 to get the sum of the interior angle measurements for any size polygon. And here's a theorem that describes to you what I just said. We're going to be using that in the next example. We want to find the sum of the interior angle measures of a convex heptagon. Now, a heptagon means that it is has got seven sides, so it's going to be n, or number of sides, is equal to seven. We're going to use the polygon angle sum theorem to insert our seven into the formula, and then we're just going to simplify the expression. We're going to end up with 900 degrees as the sum of all the angles in a heptagon or seven-sided polygon. Let's try another. This time we want to find the measurement of each of the individual interior angles in a regular 16 gon. Regular, remember, means that all of the angle measurements are the same. All 16 in this polygon have the same measurement. So the first thing that we're going to do is find the sum of all of them by plugging in 16 for n. That gives us a total. We're going to take that total and divide by the number of angles we have, which is 16. That gives us 157.5 degrees. In this example, we have an expression for each of the different angles. So a, b, c, d, e, it's all a number times c, which is our unknown. But we know we have a pentagon, which is five sides, so n is equal to five. We're going to use our formula to determine that we have a total of 540 degrees as the sum of all these interior angle measurements of this pentagon. We're going to set up an equation so that all of the angle measurements add up to 540. And once we do that, we're going to combine like terms and then solve for c. Once we get c, we're going to plug in to each of those expressions so that we can determine the angle measurements. Whoops, so sorry. So hopefully you were able to get those without any difficulty. Let's move on to the next concept. Here we have uh, some, pen, uh, some um, sorry, polygons drawn with exterior angles shown. Now you, you form an exterior angle by extending the segment that makes the polygon. So we are going to see that we have a new theorem that says we add up the exterior angles on any polygon and the total of the exterior angles is going to equal 360 degrees. So if you add the exterior angles on a triangle or on a pentagon or any other size, they're always going to add up to 360 degrees. So this is the theorem that tells us that. And what we're going to do is we're going to try the example. We're on example number four. And the first question says, find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular 20 gone. So we know that there are 20 sides. We know that they total up to 360 degrees for each of the 20 angles. And so we're going to take 360 and divide by 20. So each angle, each exterior angle, I should say, it measures 18 degrees on a 20-sided polygon. Here's a polygon that has expressions, once again, for the exterior angle. So what we're going to do is set up an equation. We know they have to total 360 degrees, so we're going to set up an equation where we add up all of the exterior angles, set it equal to 360 degrees, solve for the unknown by combining like terms and using our algebra skills, and we come up with b is equal to 3. In this example, that's all we had to find. We did not need to find the independent individual angle measurements. This is the last example in your notes, although it's a different question, and what we see is that we have a camera aperture that's formed by 10 blades, creating 10 interior angles and 10 exterior angles. In order to find the measure of every exterior angle, what we're going to do is take the total, 360 degrees, for the sum of exterior angles, and divide by 10, giving us 36 degrees. That is it for this lesson. I'll see you back in section 6.2.